Today we're going to be talking about the coordinates and as you can see we have a lot to cover so this video might take a bit longer than usual. Um, the first one we're looking at is generated and oh yeah by the way we can find them under input and then here it says text coordinates and all the others are there as well. So generated gives you a coordinate space between where the all the coordinates are between 0 and 1 on your object and it uses the bounding box of the object. If you don't really know what that means it's not that important but the point is that it depends on the object so it's not going to be the same for every object you place in the scene and it depends on the geometry of your object as well so at this point our x and y are 0 but our z is 1 and that's why we get a blue color and our z is 1 because we're, we have a plane but if we were to use uh, say a cube let me assign the material you can see that the z value also changes and here it is black because x y and z are zero so we get an rgb 0, 0, 0 which is just black and here rgb 1 1 1 will be white and if you look at the bottom here our x is one but our y and z are zero and that's why we get completely red and here we get completely green because our x and z are zero and then here it's completely blue because our y uh, and x are zero so that's generated coordinates use them quite a lot when texturing um, let's delete the cube and go back to our plane so next one we're going to be looking at is normal and what normal does it gives you well the normal vector at each point and since it's a plane, the normal is the same everywhere. So let's add in um, a sphere, maybe. Let me give it a bit less vertices. Maybe something like this. 16 by 8. Should be all right. And let's assign the material. So you can see that for the sphere, it's not the same everywhere. And the normal... Um, Maybe it's better if I show you here. Um, let's. I have still have some annotations here. Okay. So the normal points perpendicular to the plane or the quad at that point. So we something like that. Well, it looks weird now because I'm rotating. But the point is that this normal input here doesn't change if we rotate our thing. So if you rotate it, it stays the same because it also takes into account the object's rotation. So even though we're rotating it, rotating it, it's also looking at the rotation of the object so it cancels itself out. But however, if I um, go into edit mode and then rotate, you can see that it's actually changing and the same for the plane it's not changing when I'm in ob uh, object mode but if I go into edit mode select everything and then rotate you can see that the normal actually changes okay um, let's just delete this sphere for now and let's take a look at the next one so UV, what this does is, well, it looks at the UV map. If you don't know what a UV map, um, <laughs> you can, there are lots of videos about UV maps. And if you have a, you don't, if you have multiple UV maps and you want to choose the one you want, you can use the UV map node. And this one will just do the same, but here you can choose the UV map. There's also this option which says from instancer or maybe here and what that does it takes the UV map from the inst uh, the object which is emitting the particles so I think I have one right here so as you can see um, let me zoom in this object is emitting particles and each of them have their own UV map but the reason why they still have their own and not the one from um, the parent object is because we're in Eevee. If you change the cycles, 
you can see that their color is based on the UV map of this one. But since this one um, has the same material, it doesn't have a parent object, so it just goes black. But a better way to show this is um, in the Blender manual, they show it really nicely. So you have this plane here, and then they instant spheres on the sur surface of this um, other sphere. And then you can see that the texture coordinates are based on the coordinates of the parent object itself. And you can search more info about all of these coordinates on the Blender manual. So it's just docs.blender.org slash manual. I'll put the link in the description. So let me just hide this one again. And you can go back. And let's switch to Eevee. Great. So we don't need this right now. And now we can look at object coordinates. This one is along with generated and object is the one which we use a lot. Generated, UV and object are the ones we use the most. So as you can see, object coordinates, there are negative values. So anytime you see something black, it's either zero or negative. Here, the red is, in dis is displayed as black because it's negative, so the X value. But since there's still a Y value that's positive, we still see color. But here, the X and Y are both negative, so we see black. And the object coordinate takes the origin as the origin of the object itself. So again, if I move it around, rotate it, um, nothing happens. I mean, it stays the same if you just look at the plane from a top view. So it takes into account the object's rotation and location. So let me, and the scale as well. So how can we change this? One thing we can do is if we go into edit mode and move it around, the origin still stays at the center of the screen, but now the object is somewhere else. So you can see if I rotate, it rotates around the origin. That's one way. Um, let me undo that. The other way we we can change where the origin of this coordinate space is by, for example, adding in an empty, like uh, plane axis. And then under shading, if you go here, we can choose the empty. And now it looks the same, but if we move this empty around, this will be the origin of our coordinate space. And as I go down, you can see that the Z values are taken into account as well. So let me delete this. Okay, and the next one is camera. So the camera right now, since I'm not in camera view, is just looking at my window and it's placing the center of the window becomes the center of the coordinate space. And the Z value becomes our distance to the plane or to the shading point. So as I get closer, um, the Z values decrease and as I get farther away, the Z values um, increase. So I can actually show that if I go converter separate. Then if you look at the Z, as I get farther, it should get bright, brighter. Um, let me check. Okay. And the next one is window. And it's a bit like camera, except that um, for this one, the center of the screen is here at the bottom right corner. So as you can see, if I move the plane and it doesn't take into account the objects, it's just the screen itself becomes the coordinate space. So this is zero, zero, this is um, zero, one or one zero rather. So this is X equals one, Y equals one, and Z is equal to zero. So there's no Z coordinates. And this is sometimes useful, but like I said, object generated in UV are the ones we use the most. And finally, there's reflection. 
and this just um, it's better if I show it here so it projects um, a ray from the camera to the plane and so we have a ray here and then it takes a look at the normal of the plane for example let's say the camera was there and then um, let me zoom in it and the normal of the plane I don't know point straight up I sorry if I can draw straight line then it reflects it and this is the result of the this is what we actually get so again this is this can create some cool effects but you don't use it that often so if I look from the top view all the vectors going down are pointing straight down and since the plane is flat on the ground the reflection goes straight up and that's why we get a completely blue value if I look at the bottom um, it's going to be black because the reflection points straight down and then we're done with the texture coordinates node so we've already looked at the UV map and texture coordinates now let's take a look at the object info node so the object info node has one um, texture cord uh, one coordinate space we can use it's not really a coordinate space this location is just one value it's the location of the origin so sometimes it's useful but most of the time we won't use this so I'll, we won't look at this that much further and the position this is different from object or generated because now the position is just the position in the 3d view so if I move the object the co the origin stays at the origin of the 3d view as you can see and so if you want to make a texture that looks like it's part of the room or something and when the object moves around it this is really useful because when you move the object the texture stays in the same place so let's let me just show you if I add in um, a brick texture All right, put the vector here and if I now move the object you can see that it actually the bricks stay at the same place even though the object is moving now the normal this is just the same as this normal but there's another normal here it's called true normal and the difference is that the normal it takes into account smooth shading so again let me add in our UV sphere and give it our material right now if I set it to sh shade smooth you don't see anything but if I change it to the normal you can see it actually changes shade smooth shade flat so the true normal is the actual normal of the plane while the normal takes into account if you have smooth shading enabled now the tangent what that does is you have to imagine that there there's a circle at every point wait there we go and so imagine there's a circle here let me just draw that oh wait I have annotations turn off so there's this <laughs> that doesn't look much like a circle so there's a circle here and then the tangent is the one that lies tangent to it so for example at this point the tangent points this way and as you can see this points in the y direction and that's why we get green values here and at this point um, at this point it goes in the x direction so we get red values here and as you can see it's just like we rotated the plane 90 degrees 
So if you look at, for example, object coordinates, you'll see that it's the same thing, but then a red is here in the um, right bottom right. But if you look at the tangent, oh, I missed it. The red is at the bottom left. So we've rotated around. And it looks a bit weird because of um, precision errors, especially around the origin, because then it gets. Um, yeah, computers aren't perfect. They can't calculate everything precisely. So we get a small little bit of color bleed happening. I already showed the true normal. And the incoming, what that does, if, if when, when it renders the image, at every point, it takes the array from the camera to that point, but then in the opposite direction. So from that point to the camera. And so at this point, everything's pointing up. So we get blue and we can use this to create our reflection using the vector math we've seen before. So let me add in a vector math and duplicate it. So let's first use um, the reflect and we need to reflect around the normal. So let's take in the normal here. But now it's pointing in the wrong direction. So we still, because like I said, it's incoming. So it's coming to the camera, but when we reflect something it should be coming out of the camera. So we need to add in a scale before we, and then scale it by minus one to flip the vector around. And now this is exactly the same as using just the reflection. So again, if I rotate and then maybe switch to reflection, let me quickly add a reroute so we can see it better. As you can see, there's no difference. So this is how you can calculate the reflection if you wanted to, if you want more control. So yeah, the incoming, it does, it takes a point on the plane and then straight to the camera for every shading point. And shading points are just all the points that get calculated where the shader is applied to that point. So it goes through every point on this plane that we can see. It's not really pixels, but pretty much like pixels. And for every point it goes, it traces a ray to the, our camera. So let me get rid of these. And finally there's parametric. And this one is, um, you use it for lights. So for area lights, this will give you standard UV coordinates, but for um, point lights, this will give you uh, spherical coordinates for the lights. So how do I know all of this? Again, it's on the Blender manual. It's explained here. So for example, parametric coordinates of the shading point on the surface to area lights it outputs its UV coordinates in planar mapping and in spherical coordinates to point lights. So that's how I know most of these stuff by reading the manual and then trying to understand it. Um, and finally, our final node is the camera data. And this has the view vector. This is just like the, um, the camera vector. It's right here. But the difference is, like I said, the camera uses the distance to the plane. So the colors change a bit. As you can see, if I get close, the values get very dark because they're less than zero, uh, less than one and between zero and one. And so it's actually using, I'm not sure if it's using the Z def or the view distance, but as you can see, we have the same thing here. Is the Z def is for the shading points again? <laughs> Z def this oh no, it's for the pixels, and the view distance is for the shading points. It's almost the same thing in most cases. It's exactly the same, but might not be. Yeah, sorry, I got a bit confused there, but um, so the difference between view vector and camera is that the camera takes into account the distance from that point 
to the camera while the view vector always gives the same distance which I think is always one and furthermore one important thing to notice this counts for all those things if you have um, auto perspective enabled so let me go here and when I go to top view you can see that I'm automatically going to orthographic and when I rotate I'm in perspective and these coordinates act different under perspective and um, orthographic in orthographic projection so if I change to orthographic view there is no distance so you can see the well, the camera is now in set to perspective I think I have change it to orthographic it, it makes it look really flat and that's trying to emulate the fact that in orthographic every object or every point is the same distance from the camera and so you don't take into account the distance and that's why for example when we look at the normal or um, the reflection rather if I go into top view it's completely blue but if I now change to perspective we actually get different colors even though I'm still in um, top view because this point is actually further away from the camera and let me try and draw that oh, let me change to perspective <laughs> so as you can see I move this down the rays are traced from the center of this point and then at the corner this line is not a straight line it's only in this sorry, only in the center is there's actually a straight line so but when I change to orthographic all these points are straight all of these become straight lines so we get the same color everywhere while if we were in perspective we get different values because we have rotation So same thing here, when we go to view vector, if we look at the top view, suddenly the blue all goes away because we're not looking at the distance and the distance is in the Z component. And so we don't see that anymore unless we um, start rotating. And let me change to orthographic. Now you can see it looks really weird. And again, there's this artifact and I think this problem is caused because it's in orthographic. And you can see it looks exactly the same in camera, except we don't get the weird thing around the origin with a precision error. So I think it calculates it in a different way. I don't know exactly how it works behind the scenes. But yeah, so that's really important to note about orthographic. And that's all.